All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Kayfabe. I am your host, Will Farrell. Kayfabe! I, I always forget. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. <laughs> I'm going to remember that. I ain't going to ever forget again. But yes, I am your host, Will Farrell. Oh, see, you forget. Oh, that oh that, I'm sorry. That's yeah, my. So you, I, watched, I, I, I watched you move the lock like this. I, I got caught in the lock. I was like, I told him he about to do something. Okay. I was like, I, he didn't like that. I was like, okay, I'm okay. Uh, it's <laughs> yeah, your boy. Like. Hey, uh, 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 I'm his co host, your boy Chinadu. Uh, like I said, to K Fabe. But K Fabe can't break the goddamn K Fabe. Every time he says the K Fabe, I think of Jim Cornette's voice. You can't break the goddamn K Fabe. <laughs> can't break the goddamn K Fabe. Fucking that piss at this Russo. Fuck him. Oh. <laughs> you breaking the goddamn tape bag. Man, Yo, the day we have Jim Crockett on here, I, I don't I don't need more episodes. I'm done. No, that's, that's, that's it. Yeah, bro. Can't uh, tell me nothing. Serious finale, man. We, we've done everything. Yeah, you can't tell us nothing. Jim Crockett was on here. <laughs> and he said, you got him. Breaking the goddamn tape bag. He said it. Yeah, we're in there. We are in there, man. And just like that, we are also in for a great episode today. We got a lot to talk about. We have to talk about the money in the bank coming up. We, of course, we got the Raw and SmackDown recap, as well as some fantasy booking, because, of course, we are in celebration for this episode, because all of this week has been NWO week. 25 Years for life, for Come life. On. For life. 25 years of when the whole wrestling entertainment changed. We're gonna be talking about that today, as well as that being a part of the fantasy booking. But you gotta stay tuned for that. You gotta stay tuned so that way we know you're yes. watching and listening to the whole thing. We're first yes. gonna get into something that I think uh we 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 discussed behind here a lot, but we did briefly pick up on here, but after what we've seen recently, of course, with uh, AEW, that's our first stop here today. Uh, our, our, our first topic here is something that you mentioned. Is Cody done with wrestling? You made a great you made a great mention that, you know, Cody kind of has seen a little bit out of it recently in some of his performances when it comes to doing these promos, even when it comes to just creating like the rivalries that he is in. It just, a lot of stuff don't kind of seems to make sense. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, honestly, I, I do, I, I do feel that way. I want to say firstly that Cody is one of my top five favorite wrestlers currently, and he's my favorite wrestler in AEW by by a lot. He's one of my, yeah. he's my favorite one. He's he was the reason why I watched in the first place. He was oh, yeah. the reason why I watched, and he's, he's still one of my favorite wrestlers. But this is and and I say that too, and I, and I do know that uh, his wife just had a baby. I know that, you know, pregnancy and everything like that, especially during lockdown around the company, that's a lot he has on his plate already. So I understand yeah. that wholeheartedly. I'm talking about solely just as me seeing him as a wrestling spirit. It's like, I feel like, I mean, like, I feel like, I mean, he's, he's already done so much already. Cause I mean, we are not going to negate, he spent a decade in WWE right there. Like that's, that's some folks entire career right there. A oh, decade yeah. in WWE. So all, all this is, I feel, already amazing overtime in the wrestling career, though, because you put in a decade there, and he reinvented himself, and he's in a whole new chapter now. But I feel like the chapter we're seeing, I feel like I feel like we're watching him, like, become our rock of AEW in a way, like early stages of Hollywood, the rock. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, af like after Scorpion King, this is during the rundown and all these types of things. You know, when he's building and he's there, but not – not really, because if you think about it, in the past year, we have seen a promo for the return of Cody Rhodes like three, four times. Yeah, that's way too. That's way, way too, many. too many. Way too many. He was he was on the big big show. It seems like he to me he has a bigger interest in acting. There's nothing wrong with that, but that's what it seems like to me though, because it's like I see him in the ring and the feuds he's been in. Nothing that I could really sink my teeth in. Like when you look at his his feud with Dustin and Cody, which I felt has been like the best promo packages that they've ever done to date. Agreed. That that build up, all that. I felt like I haven't seen that since they first started. Like the promo packages, the build up that they had between them and the Bucks, like that kind of build and the one between him and Jericho. I felt like that's where it it peaked. It ended. Like that kind of build where I was really invested. 
and his storylines was him and Jericho. After that, the MJF thing, I felt like he kind of, I felt like it kind of got rushed in a way just to kind of get that done because Cody was busy doing other stuff and Cody lost it. Then went off to go be in Hollywood and came back and left again and came back and left again and came back. And I feel like he throws together feuds to try to get people over, but it doesn't work. Like I, it didn't get over Anthony and Gogo. It didn't get over anybody in the dark order to me. Mm-hmm. It Sean didn't get Spears. over Sean Spears. No, like it didn't. I don't. And to me, this it seems like he's not in it. <clears throat> you know, you know what it is. And you know, just correct me if I'm wrong. In the beginning, and I think as well for Kenny Omega, we have two examples of two triggers that should have been pulled and weren't. Yeah. So when when Cody yeah. started this and everything came in, it was like, okay, I want to put everybody on. And the yeah. same thing for Kenny. Kenny came in and he came in <clears throat> with this role, you know, as this executive person and doing all of this, that, and the third. And so both of them stepped kind of back into the spotlight to let these other people shine. The only problem with that is you should have done the complete opposite. I know you didn't want to be like WCW and pull an Eric Bischoff and stuff like that, but Cody, you were who we came to see. Yeah. The belt should be put on you. You should have been the one that should have got DDT'd by John Moxley and then began that feud, not Jericho. Jericho yeah. should be in your place fighting in the TNT uh, 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 bracket and that division, putting these people over. Not the main star. You have the greatest B-list player of all time as the head of your show. And then you pull Kenny Omega to finally become the title collector, and it was too late. I don't want to see Kenny now. I've seen Kenny in tag team gold. I've seen Kenny in matches that he shouldn't have been in. I don't want to see him now. Neither does anybody else. And then you put a belt on him. And then what happens? He leaves. He's rarely there. He's on impact. He's on TNA. Like what the fuck is going on? Yep. Y'all both pulled the wrong trigger. And I understand why you did it, but it was like this. If at any time, this was the time for you to not do it. This was the time for you get a little selfish as you first start, be the face of that. And just like you said, now, had you now decided, hey, let me go a little bit back because we just saw at least three good feuds from Cody by now. We just saw at yep. least three good feuds from Kenny by now to where Cody could have went, you know what? I, I put it on here. We've brought the crowd in. Y'all know these other players. Now it's their turn for you to allow them to be legends like y'all have create, allowed me to be. Thank you so much. And then that's when you take your step back. That's when you go be in, uh, in movies and television and stuff like that. The way you did it, it just made it, you, you know what, it, and I hate to say it like this. You stardusted yourself in your own company. I mean, I, it's, 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 it's honestly hard to argue that. And, and I say this, and, I, and it's hard to say because I am a big Cody Rhodes fan. Like you said, I came here for Cody. Like it says, look at who you came to see. I came to see Cody. It's Cody. You better. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? I came for Cody. And not only is Cody halfway there, but Cody can never be the world champion. That was why I hated it. No, it would, we we didn't the, again. This would have been that time if they'd have wrapped that AEW belt around you. I would have not been mad, bro. We no one would have been upset. No one. They you, you might have got one or two Triple H jokes, but no. But the, the thing is, but your real fans, we know who you are and where you came from, and we know what you're trying to build. Right. You guys are the big names right now. I don't know who Jungle Boy is. Mm. I don't know who MJF is. I don't know who Sammy Guevara is. I don't know. And I've seen you play at both sides. I've seen you as a heel. I've seen you as a baby face. However, you wanted to come out of that situation after becoming champion, whether it was heel, whether it was baby face, we've seen both and we would have accepted either or. We would have accepted you creating a faction. We would have accepted you being either, again, the asshole or the good guy. But you didn't do that. And you put it in front of Jericho and an out of shape Jericho, out of shape Jericho. Mike skills, not the way they used to be. Popping the bubbly is not a cute phrase. 
with yeah. a group of fucking work workhorses that could be dominating right now that barely get any TV time, that barely get any matches, that barely highlight anything that they could be. Now you've taken MJF, putting them into that thing along with other wrestlers. So now you have over 10 people in one rivalry where only two people technically really fight. Yep. So what, y'all NWO now? And y'all did it within two years. This is only two years of your company being up. Two. Let me ask two. you this too. Let me ask you this too. Just, just again, this isn't hate. This is just facts of asking. What it? What is AEW's WrestleMania? I, I would give their SummerSlam double or nothing. I would say double or nothing is their SummerSlam. Yeah. Like, is it? Is I? Is is it all out? I don't like. Is it? That's is about it the series. Out? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's like, why are you trying to change a format that worked? We're okay with the end of the month pay per view each month till you lead up to your big one. That's a point you don't know by. Of course, you like you said, you get the one or two jokes like, oh, y'all doing like WWE? No. You're doing a smart formula that works. No one's yeah. mad at you for that. This is that, and that's the thing too. I think they, they're trying so hard to not be them when it's like yes. that's what we want you yes. to kind of do. Yeah, <laughs> we really just being honest. It's like, yo, we want you to do just like WWE does, just in a show. less, yes, and in just a less racist way. That's like, it. If you could like if you do it and throw some equality in there and just get over the people who deserve it and. Show more than just white guys every week. And, and y'all already got the wrestling aspect. So it's like the way y'all wrestle is way more of a sports field than WWE when it's more yeah. along the lines of the entertainment side. And again, nothing wrong with that, but that's where we would have got our balance in this industry. It's like, yo, if I want to go see, and you know, this is no disrespect. If I want to go see a male soap opera, I can go to WWE. That's why I watch. Yeah. It is a male soap yeah. opera. If yeah. I want to see wrestling sport where I know, like, dude, it take one more of them uh, Rainmaker clotheslines and that's going to end it, I go to AEW. Yeah. And AEW just refused to do that, man. So I see why Cody is in these movies. And, oh, and he's good at it, too. So that's the thing I like yeah. about it, too. He's actually very good at yeah. a lot of stuff he's been in. Like Arrow, yeah. I love this character in Arrow. Uh, Me, too. Me, too. So, yeah, man. So as we always say, bro, we could just hope for the best at AEW, you know, get it together and just, um, you know, do something. Well, one last thing I want to ask you, though, do you do you think we'll see uh, Brandy Rhodes back on the main screen again? Because I mean, because I know for the, you think so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think she'll make an appearance. I don't know. I don't know about stepping in the ring. Um, yeah. If I had to be honest with Brandy Rhodes, I'm not. And this is and this is no shade amongst her and that but i would definitely tell her to take the she could be vince of the women's division yeah you know what i'm saying so it's just kind of like yo you've already had that attitude so it's like yo build the corporation put Britt baker as stone cold and now run that yeah run that send everybody send a a, a gorilla con against her send the other ones and then just start building up the rest of these ladies to come in and stuff like that add another uh like you said like we always say women's television champion or something like that so then that way it's like hey you're still here and we're starting to see these dope storylines it's like what we wanted to mm-hmm. see from cody we can't see from him but we can see from you yeah and then that can and- bring a lot of stuff in too and it can work, and the thing, and and like, and Brandy in that role, Brandy is good on the mic. Brandy's like, phenomenal on that mic. Like, like the promo she cut against what's her name? I guess that uh, what's that girl? Uh, she she uh, she came with Shaq. I can't remember. What I always said her name wrong. I always said her name yeah. wrong. I can't remember though, but like, but that promo, like, it was, it gave, it gave me, it it gave me strong hood black girl energy, which I wasn't used to hearing from Brandy, mm. but it was still a, a still a good promo nonetheless, and I feel like she's on the mic. Some folks say they get tired of seeing her. I don't get tired of seeing Brandy. I I, 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 I enjoy Brandy Rhodes for real. I really do. I do. Like, I, I really, do. yeah. I like even like her backstory. Talking about her, her the figure skater. I get she can pull me in. I get invested. 
I didn't understand the Nightmare Collective. That w- that didn't work, which is fine. Something done, it's fine. We dropped it. We moved on. That was the best thing to do. Hey, I'm with it. But I would love to see her back on there, man. Especially like you said, run, 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 run the women's division like that. I would, I would really enjoy that because I don't like Kenny Omega running it. Because if I see another wrestler solely from Japan, no disrespect to anybody from Japan, but Jesus, Kenny Omega, there are a lot of great talents here. And every week you keep telling us we got all this great, amazing talent from the world, but you still keep pulling from women from the same country over and over again. It's starting to look kind of weird. I want to see more diversity. Thanks. I would love to see you take that championship and give it to someone who really deserves it. Good night. Bang. Bang. I, 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 this really got over in Japan. No, like, it's no. Not. You know why? Because Japan don't have none of that shit. It's yeah. wrestling. Like yeah. the, the extravaganza part is the entrance. That's yeah. the spectacle That's part. It. After that, it's straight wrestling. There is no yeah. real promo cuts. If it is a promo, it's played on the screen that they've already shot up. So it's like, yo, y'all don't really have to practice mic skills. You really don't have to practice to be in front of anybody. When you do the post-production and interviews, it literally just looks like Jerry Springer going wild. So it's like, yo, that's their format. Again, no disrespect to them, but they're more focused on what's going on in that ring when the bell rings. Which is great. It. It, which is great. Which is great. Which is great because like they still have an amazing, amazing wrestling industry out there. It's still like it. It's the way it's, people told me it was the way it was in the Attitude Era. Still to this day over there, like it's still just as popular as ever it was. And I mean, and I ain't gonna lie, I almost envy that man because I miss those days. I really wish we could have had those days as us as adults. Now we could have yeah. like had more money to enjoy it and do stuff and be there. You know, we yeah. were kids when it was going on, so we had no right. real couldn't really do nothing. But honestly, but like you said, like I just. I feel like seeing Omega week to week to me expose him because like Japan would see him every couple of months. Mm-hmm. Seeing him week to week, I'm not impressed. Him and Don Callis hit 69, me, bro. Bro, him, him, him and Moxley going through what it was, a bed of barbed wire. I was like, this is the same Kenny Omega that had an Iron Man match uh with Okada, correct? Is that dude? Mm-hmm. That guy, right? Same, yeah, that guy. That guy that took like what eight rainmakers from this dude, and I was like, oh, okay. And you put him in a tag team with Adam Page, who you were supposed to be building as again your new Stone Cold, which again, Hangman Page. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. But you remember, you remember, remember the whole cowboy ish? Remember that the crowd chanting that cowboy ish? I was like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, get rid of that. Because it's like his name is Hangman Page. It's a cowboy thing, but you're just drinking beer. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. yeah. Stone Cold is from Texas. Stone Cold got a ranch. Stone Cold drink beer. Stone Cold has never mm-hmm. called himself a cowboy. Nope. They don't have to associate with one another. So, yeah. but okay, that's yeah. again, that's hey, your hey, Yeah, <laughs> hey, sh- I get it. I sure. Hey, if it works for you, sure. But I can tell you one thing: it ain't working for us. Yeah. Mm-mm. But I'll show. But well, we're gonna move on to some stuff where it is. It's semi working. It's semi working. Oh, it's time for that raw SmackDown recap, man. Okay? Recap. The recap. Okay, we're getting ready for we're heading to money in the bank. Of course, money is the, in the bank is that that pay-per-view where we at least know two people in the men, one in the men and one in the women's division will have the opportunity to change their careers by grabbing that briefcase and getting a title match anywhere, anywhere. And I'm very glad that that was uh, cleared up and we're going to mention that when we get to smack down. But first... Yeah. We got to go to Raw first. We got to get Raw. So, you know, we take, we taking the, uh, let me, yeah. pulling the condom off of this conversation and we going in Raw. Okay. Pull it off. <laughs> uh, Raw kicked off with Ms. TV, the money and the bank guests were there. Um, it it kind of ensued into some chaos leading to uh, John Morrison and Ricochet 2 
um, didn't disappoint like he did last Monday. It was definitely just as chaotic. People were flying everywhere. Ricochet and John Morrison didn't disappoint. Oh, here's my that feud. That's a feud, man. I man, I really wish they'd have given that that like some real breathing build, something like because that was amazing. I, I, I spots love between it. those guys. Yes. I, well, but you know what? I, I really am kind of just like, here's the thing with money in the bank. You know how you know it's going to be good when it when it's based on folks that I think gel well together? And yeah. I'm going to be honest, I don't see a good gelling of this one. Like, you know what, you know, you know what, it, you know what topped it every time? And this is what I always try to compare it to. It was what? the money in the bank that had, I believe, Kevin Owens uh Sami Zayn, Chris Jericho, um, and I forget the other three, but it was when they had that conversation and all of them were on ladders while they were cutting their promos. I remember that. That was the one, and when I saw that, I was like, I yo, that. money in the bank gonna be lit. That's gonna be the match. And it didn't disappoint. You see it on here, and it's just kind of like clusterfuck just yeah. the, the closest way i'm putting it. i don't know I, I i don't know where drew's going i don't know where drew's going from here because and it's no fault of him none it's, of him it's not it's not none of him it's the way not. they have booked him it's just been so like and then ricochet where did... i know why now though we know why now though and this and you know what? It's no fault to Rickish uh, to uh, to Drew at all. You too big, dude. I'm sorry, you too big. You too big. And what really happened is, and I hate to blame it, you are taking the crap because of Adam Cole and Finn Balor. We went yeah. from super heavyweights to these small guys holding titles, and. None of those feuds make sense putting them against you. You went, there's no way from you to go. There's no way you're going to convince me Ricochet will beat Drew McIntyre after he beat Brock. Yeah. That don't make sense. That don't match up. Rick, and not saying that Ricochet can't, but it's because of the simple fact Ricochet ain't been built up to do that. Even, the, pe even the people you see in Money in the Bank. John Morrison, no. Only one really would be AJ Styles. And guess what? You got AJ Styles in the tag team. Yeah, where he goes from heel to face every week. So your Seth Rollins of Raw, not to take away from AJ Styles, just you know, just as far as work workhorse go to the tag team with a monster, whom which you still have not done nothing with. Once again, this is not Drew's fault. No, no, no it's 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 not like. You have somebody who can cut amazing promos. Like, the fact that when I tell you people were at home, I guarantee people teared up when he won that title for the first time at WrestleMania. Oh, yeah. I guarantee. With everything we know that he's been through and they, he's, he's done to get better and get back, we all were invested. And in a year, you made people not care. Through this terrible booking and, and, and ridiculous rivalries, they made, like, when it came to him and Heath Slater and all that, you guys made him look like a dick. Like he didn't hit anybody back. I couldn't care about you guys no more. Why would you do that to him? He has built himself up as somebody who cares about the, the entire, the, the whole business. Why would he do that? Why would he do that? It don't, it's just, that's, it's just, man, it sucks because it's like, so, so many things you could do. You're just like, yo, you just not doing like for one, like, why is Seamus not in this match? Where is Sheamus? How is Sheamus the U.S. champ and not being seen? But you yeah. got, but you got Jackson Ryder's ass on here every week. Yeah, and they're trying to make him a baby face. Like they're trying who, to make him a bro. It's it's just like I I, I I get it because they're here, and I don't get it because they're here because it's like Jackson Ryder. And again, this is this is no disrespect to any of them, but it's like. Jackson Riker, Lucha House Party, Mason T Bar. You've built none of these people. Nope. Why are they spotlighted on Monday when you got the hurt business ready to go? And I'm still calling, I'm gonna fuck what they say. I'm calling them the hurt business. Um yes. half of the hurt business 
ready to go, ready to really, if they wanted to, take them tag team title uh, off of AJ and Amos. But it's like, you're not doing that. Yeah. Like, like this this Mustafa and, and Mansoor thing. Like, I'm interested in that. Don't get me wrong. I, I just... Yeah. But it's like, you haven't established move Mustafa as a correct heel because he you broke up Retribution. So clearly, Retribution got beat up so much that under your command, you don't know how to command anything. Yeah, and Retribution was a complete flop. A complete flop. And it could have worked. That tended it really. Could, it could. It really. really. It could. Really? Listen, hear me out. Miniature fancy booking right now, okay? Here's the thing. Here's here's what I would have done with retribution, right? The thing is, first of all, I wouldn't call it retribution for one. That's a terrible name. It's so wordy. Who talks like that? I'll have retribution. Who talks like that? Nobody. You call these guys something. You can the psychos, the jackal, hey. something, anything other than that. Hey, have them know, come in. Chill, chill, you want me to cut you off? You know how I know this ain't gonna work because I know where you're going. It it was a group already. It was called fucking sanity. Hey, WWE writer's room, did you hear that? Hey, that's why it didn't work. You already had that group on the roster. But anyway. <laughs> that's why I didn't want, I didn't want you to waste your book, and I didn't want you to waste this creative as fuck mind you got on that when it already was there ready to go. Like, Little Caesar's hot and ready. You brought up sanity with that. It made more sense. The, 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 nut, the nut cases, and you know who could have been letting them in? Nikki Cross. Right there. Nikki Cross. And, it, and if you really wanted to tie it in, who pulling Nikki strings? Alexa. The whole time she pulled, and now she got a full faction. It, it made perfect sense, bro. But I, but I ain't gonna lie, for real. With the Rossi, he had Mace, T-Bar, me and him, all these guys. They could have just made them themselves and been disgruntled employees that came for revenge. Like, I remember the thing with, uh, is it Mason T-Bar? I remember him as D.O. Madden. I, yeah. I remember him as Mar I remember him as Marcellus Black at Reality of Wrestling. Mm. I remember seeing him there. So that's why I'm like, why are they doing this to him? You know why? Because well, <laughs> Brock Lesnar put that nigga through a table and he ain't been right since. Ain't been right since. That was And that was random as hell because I was like, what was that for? Cause it was like there was no retro no retribution, ironically, when it came yeah. to that. Nothing. I was like, this is a pretty big dude, too. And I was like, when he stood it up, I was like, Yeah, yo, you you, know, you could give Brock a problem. Like yeah. Brock shouldn't have easily done that to you. Yeah, he they asked five and put him through a table, and the next week Samoa Joe was there and they never brought him back up again. But like you said, this was all sanity again. And you said, and like they haven't built up anybody to be real, like Mustafa Ali and uh and uh and what's his name, and Mansoor, nothing. They haven't built up anybody. That's why, like having having these different tag divisions is so pointless. Like you might as well combine them and just let them flow because it makes no sense. You don't have enough teams. You don't nope. have enough. You don't. And and the teams you do have, you have the Viking Raiders on there. Nobody's invested. Nobody. You now you nope. now lumped them what with Matt Riddle. And AJ Styles, who is now in Money in the Bank somehow. So now the tag team titles are tied into Money in the Bank. So those won't be defended um, at nope. the pay per view. And nope. so now, because of that and getting in the fight, now this is what brings them into it. So most likely the Viking Raiders will have their tag title match on Raw, not win. And so now those are being held by AJ Styles and Osmos, which means AJ Styles is not going to win money in the bank. And what? When Lucha House Party, Viking Raiders, and whoever the fuck else is on Raw. Yeah. Oh, Hurt Business. I'm sorry, Hurt Business. Yeah. Yeah. New Day. I would rather see the New Day have these titles on right now. Because at least they would be entertaining with them. At least. They ain't even got to touch them. They just got them on their waist. Yeah. Because, like, they're, and again, like, no they're, they're no tag teams at all. No. Nobody credible. And what's so sad is Grand Metalik is actually a really good wrestler. Very good. All of them, actually. Like, like they don't, yeah. no disrespect no, to Lucha yeah. Party, but it's like, 
either you go either you gonna break them up and let them go run about on two hundred five or, or or nothing like. But I think I, I, but I think at this point it's only two of them now, right? I think Kalisto got released, didn't he? I believe so because they did kind of have that little feud thing that was like yeah. they, you know they kick uh they kicked one of them out and I believe yeah. Kalisto was, was the, the one that did get kicked because because I think it's Lindsay Dorado and Grandma Talik. I think it's just those two left. Oh wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is it or is that? Oh yeah, it is Grandma Talik. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. You're right. Yeah, Grandma Talik. Like, yeah, Grandma Talik and uh yeah and uh Vince Dorado and Lindsay uh, Dorado. Yeah, so they're still there and then it's like you know this whole like. Matt Riddle thing, getting these spotlights and stuff like that. I'm just like, okay, you know, trying to see where that goes. And then um, the most interesting thing I'm seeing is Coffee and Xavier versus Bobby and MVP. Yep. I feel, okay. Now, I'm always happy to see Kofi back in the title picture. I'm always happy to see that. But it's like, I, you get mad because you, you, you look at what this could have been. You look at the fact that they had a faction built in already, the Hurt Business, and I watched Cedric and, and, and Selden Benjamin literally go right past each other on a match on Raw. Like, they weren't just feuding. Like, they weren't just tag team champions. Like, they weren't just the best he, the best faction in WWE for a year plus. It's gone. Like, there's no depth. Top field, they took away a lot of the depth that came with Bobby Lash with the Hurt Business. Like, I, I, I'm very excited to see Kofi and them in this picture, whatever, though, but it's like... You, there was so much more depth that could have gone into this that you guys could have done. It, it's stereotypical. Yeah. It's it's created poorly. It's sold poorly. Yeah. And I don't appreciate that they did that to him. You replaced him with, you know, this is under respected women, hoes. Yeah. As if that's what we're always associated with once we have something of high caliber. Yeah, because to me, I look at it like, when did, did, did Triple H ever come out with women like this every week? No, I mean, and, and so that, that was when he was with Evolution, and that was maybe yeah. one, once or twice. Yeah. But again, this goes from the UFC military, man. Like, you make it seem like we he was don't never, know. Yeah, I was going to say, like, yeah, 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 we make it say we don't know who he is, and he was never this guy. Never. MVP was not really that guy like that. No, MVP so, is all about money. So it's like, and the deal, that's Paul, that's his Paul Heyman. So I'm like, you mean to tell me MVP active, Bobby active, them two, full gold around all of their waists versus the New Day? New Day getting their ass whooped. All of a sudden, here come Big E to come help them. And then you just add Ricochet into the mix or something like that to where it's now even. And then you have matches on matches for the next year. Yeah. But instead, you put this this weak ass stuff together where we know Coffee is not going to win. We know Coffee is not going to get the job done. Not to say that he can't get the job done, just because it's not his time for, for that's not the person to take that off of Bobby. No. And we know that. So it's just like, What's going on? Like, why this was this was booked very poorly, and it, it doesn't seem like it's even being given the right caliber it needs to. I agree. And, and so it's like that was your that was your main match, as in compared to as you know we, we're going to move forward. So you know, of course, what a real talent plays, good old SmackDown. Hey, <laughs> not on Smack SmackDown. SmackDown not only had qualifying matches, not only did we get to see that we're going to have an I Quit match coming up and Money in the Bank, a women's I Quit match to for uh, that. Yes. We had a last man standing match. We had a phenomenal superstar return. Two, two actually was up in this in this piece. And you mean it's yes. bro, and that was and again that wasn't even the main events. Nope. Well, I tell y'all, you do tell SmackDown is the A show. <laughs> it's hell. Yeah. Bro, bro, we we had Edge come back, and, and and of course he came back last week, but of course Edge came back and cut that phenomenal ass promo in in the word, and not even to say, I want revenge to tell Roman you ain't nowhere near me. 
in this ring and in this business. And I feel that's where, and, and then and I, it goes back to his promo before too, where he called him Samoan Edge. Remember that? Yes. Starting the group, you come through the crowd. You're Samoan Edge. Like that was Edge Bro. promos, like that. Edge, Edge, like the promos by himself. Phenomenal. Just, but they always have been, always will be. Yeah. And so it's just like, of course, set, setting that up. And it was funny because it was like, I love that it was a trigger that could have been pulled at any time, but he did it at Money in the Bank. That could have waited till SummerSlam and it would have still just as been impactful. Mm-hmm. And so that's the thing that Raw is lacking when it comes to some of these things. Like it's not set up right. Even with like Big E and uh, uh, Apollo and uh, Baron Corbin for like the qualifying matches and stuff like that. Well, no, no, this was a tag team match. Uh, you know, uh, Apollo Crews and Baron Corbin uh, got over and stuff like that. Just, you know, so it doesn't seem like they're continuously, you know, going down the totem pole and stuff like that. But we still got Big E going into Money in the Bank uh, participating and as well as, you know, Shinsuke uh, still in Baron's crown, but, you know, still a, a not the greatest rivalry reasoning, but I love seeing their matches. I do love seeing yeah. the strong style thing because I've noticed that Baron has gotten a lot better when facing Shinsuke because of his style. And so I very, I do, I am glad to see that Baron Corn is doing what he can to improve wrestling wise, not really feeling the story, however, about him going and broke and all of that type of stuff. Cause then it's like, yeah, you want to get the WWE finances, and I'm like, yo, like, let's let's not act like they buku rich and stuff like that. Like, let's not. Do yeah. That. So, yeah. but we'll There's see nothing. where it goes. We'll see where that I agree. Goes. I, I I wholeheartedly agree, man. I just um, everything on SmackDown, I, I I honestly I thoroughly enjoy. Like, even if some people view as bad, like people like we've seen Cesaro and Seth Rollins many times, but they have good matches though. And I, 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 I'd rather see that than what I've been seeing on, on other shows. And like I said, so like, like I'm ready for Bianca to, to get a new feud. I am. But I yes. feel this, this is this is something I can stick my teeth into because this means they're going to find creative ways in this match. It's going to be a really good match. I'm excited yes. about it. On SmackDown, I don't know if you saw this, though. This is on featured on the bump. There's a promo from Otis where he is almost like he's like not in character. Talking about how he lost everything. He lost Maddie Rose's girlfriend, lost the money in the bank briefcase, and how he joined the Alpha Academy, and he's better. If you go to the uh, to the Bumps Instagram page, it's a really good promo. I don't know if they, I, don't, I don't know if it got played on SmackDown or not, but seeing that, that made me very interested in seeing who they're gonna make Otis because I feel they could make him like a pit bull type character. Like, because if they revamp him, because they took out all they took out all the goofy, they took all that out. Yeah. Serious, like give him a run. I feel like I mean like that he you guys could make him something like he could really be something on SmackDown with if if, if they really was right and honestly see that promo it got me interested. Yeah. So so like so SmackDown I said as a whole I mean I mean everything Roman is gold. Everything. Everything Roman and Jimmy and Paul and Jay everything's gold. So magical, I mean no complaint. Magic, yes. Magical man. But yeah, oh, excuse me, but you, just like even as, as you said um with Otis and stuff like that. Not too sure at, of the current gimmick at this time, mm-hmm. um, if it's going to fully work. But like you said, what it did prove is that, one, he does have the, he does have the wrestling chops for it. And then, two, the promo work is there, so it is getting better. Now it is just trying to find what character-wise suits Otis. If it's this Alpha Academy type of stuff and they yeah. still want to try to keep him as a, uh, a in this tag team with Chad Gable or if it's a tag team or anything like that. Just, just, just trying to kind of see and stuff like that. But it's like what I'm seeing now if this were the case to do it, like what I would love to see is for them to be doing this stuff, kind of bring in, uh, what is his name? Ah, what is his name? He had that good, I always forget his name now. He had that good feud with Daniel Bryan, uh, and, uh, was trying to train Daniel Bryan before uh, uh, close to the end. Drew Gulak. Uh, Gulak. Drew, yeah, Gulak. That's what he's talking about. Yeah. Gulak, Gable, and um, Otis. Otis. Mini fantasy yeah. booking. Coming to That'd a faction. Coming to a faction, and guess who leading all of them? Kurt Angle. Ooh. W- listen, listen, that's a. Th- That'd be hard. That'd be hard. The Angle Academy? Bro. All of them specialize in something? Like, yo, Bro. like imagine Otis specializes in the body slams, Gable specializes in Bro. suplex. Bro, listen. 
listen, and give, and like, that's a faction where you, if an angle go out there and says, we're making a run for the gold, you'll believe it. Because bro. of who their leader is. You'll believe it. <laughs> bro, I'm telling you, that shit be so hard, bro. On, like, yo, WWE, man, come on. It's oh, right, man. and then like, it's like, and they have all these people on contract. Well, I mean, well, they had Kurt Angle. All these people, all these folks are under contract, and they're doing nothing. Well, there's been rumored that uh, Kurt Angle might be coming back. So um, there is definitely rumors about that. So yeah. I think a lot of, too, what we've noticed is a lot of these um, releases are, aren't really personal. It is put due to budget cuts. And yeah, so no, they're yeah. really trying to save a lot of things because um, one thing that kind of cleared it up was um, you know, we're going to bounce back into uh, SmackDown with Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe is now currently on NXT. And I will talk a little bit yeah. briefly about that before we jump into our uh, fantasy booking today. But um, yeah, so uh, them being released and stuff like that, like it's, it, it's more having to do with that. But um, just finishing up and wrapping up SmackDown, um, it seems Edge was out here giving some pipe. Some more pipe. That's what apparently, apparently Edge and Edge, listen, Look out, Matt Hardy. Edge is back out of here laying pipe. Be careful, okay? Don't mm-hmm. move. <laughs> <laughs> and just like your yeah. brother, I guess it, it drove him to drink too. Man, fam. 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 You're doing that on the podcast today? Watching at home. Uh, uh, we here at, uh, at, at k <laughs> Thank you for that. That was tag team work right there, good sir. <laughs> That's a good old tag team work right there. <laughs> yeah, you set me up on that. Oh, no. oh. Talk about it. we oh, talking talk about, about it, man. We talking talk about, about it. Oh, so recently we just had found out um earlier this week that uh Jimmy Uso has been caught with a D, has been hit with the DUI, man. And uh this definitely um, brings up a lot of questions as far as him being in like, he is currently in the main storyline of SmackDown along with his cousin Roman in this, uh, you know, yeah. feud and, and whatnot. So it's just like, exactly how is this going to play out? Um, Jesus, I like, I, it's so rough too, because it's like, Sometimes the WWE will just move forward with storylines and they'll just keep pushing and eventually the you know no the tension also will die down. I I mean, and that could be the case with this as well, too, because he's in such a high profile storyline right now, and he's such an integral part of it on the A show. And you could argue that, you know, they say too, you know, the last time it was, you know, what they do on their own time is their business, which is which is you you can argue that too. But in this instance, especially with 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 the, with the history, and this isn't the first time this happened, allegedly, from, from, yeah. to my knowledge. Like you, you, you wonder what action be taken. Will this storyline be altered? Will Jimmy be dropped for a while? I mean, because I mean, Jay's been gone for a, a while too. Mm-hmm. Will they just will they just do a full reset and act like Jimmy never came back? Well, what will happen? Will this negatively affect Naomi? Because you know, in this company, if they feel they can't punish you yourself, they'll punish somebody close to you. Very you know, true. Like you said, like you said, at Triple H. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. So, uh, who knows what could happen? Who knows what the what the rebel effect would be? Because with WWE, they act they different, man. They act weird. I don't, you know. Yeah. And they, and I feel bad because if it does end up on Naomi, I felt feel bad because she she didn't, and she ain't do nothing wrong, man. She ain't do nothing except nothing. show up to work and 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 and, and be great. Yeah. Uh, if, if I'm being honest, though, man, I I I don't see anything particularly happening to Jimmy just because of you know this this, you know uh, drinking is a different thing you know what I'm saying like you know drinking and stuff like that like I feel like they'll they'll particularly skim over that it's the it's when like the hard drugs come out and stuff like that it's just one of those just like that's when it's kind of like ooh. We we can't let that get ignored. Like even like with the drinking stuff, it could just be like, yo, you could you could just they could write that in. It's just like, yo, you tell like like Roman could come in. You, you you say you're a part of this family, but you come in here and embarrassing us by drink. That's a very good point. That's a very good point. Do you do you not understand what I'm doing? Mm-hmm. I'm doing this for family. This is yep. for family. But you know what would have been a good booking right then and there. 
All of a sudden that happened. And then busting the door. Vin Diesel, he just look at the rock. So you say it's all about family. Why why did why did I not see that coming? Why I why see this is what I get for trusting you. Summer this is what slam. I get for trust. SummerSlam. Dominic Toretto versus Roman Reigns. Family. Yeah, everyone, everyone, everyone watching at home with K Fay. First of all, all of our all of our K Fabers, first of all, thank you for watching. And uh this is what we get for trust and will. You see what happened? Do you see what happened? First and foremost, how the hell is John Cena Vince's brother? Are they even the same race? How does that work? Well, it's funny is they made that work. I'm not gonna lie, because um they play off of uh Vin Diesel's like real ethnicity. Like he's like Irish, black, uh Latin, and a couple of other things. So like he does have like four or five like features in him. Like if you see the show, if you watch the movie, and it's not gonna give nothing away. Um if you remember Charlize Theron's character, she actually touches on that talking to John and stuff like that. So she'll look at him like, I can see some of the Toretto features. Y'all have like a very distinct chin. Like, so she'll actually like press on how it can, how it makes sense why that could be his brother. Okay. Okay. And first of all, too, man, them, them diesel memes have been hilarious, bro. Okay. Hilarious. Listen, all weekend, all weekend. And like you said too, like it may not nothing probably happen to Jimmy. They're probably gonna put it into the storyline. If anything, they can use that to further get to further put put Jimmy under Roman's thumb. Yeah. If anything. Yeah. To further, further drive it home. Because it's like now you gotta earn it. Now you gotta yeah. really now you gotta be like Jay. Yeah. You wanna because you, le- it? Cause you messed up. Yeah, because you legit messed up. Yeah. Like, so now you yeah. didn't want to be the bitch, you gonna be the bitch now. Yeah. Because that's the only way you're gonna learn. Yeah. Or like, imagine this dude gets on the screen like, sacrifice has to be made, okay? Look at the screen. You see Nijax beating up Naomi backstage, something like that. Like, something has to be done. You did this. Ooh, I didn't feel And he just look at, he just yo, comes sir. up to him. Yo, yo, because you know how Roman be. Roman just yeah. come up to him by his ear, like right here. Yeah. You did this. Yeah. Remember that. Because yeah. it's all about family. Yeah. Oh! That's the storyline right there, bro. That's it. That's it. And she beat and she beating her and he's like, yo, this is what has to be done. Cause like and thanks to and, and like Jimmy can run all to the back. What you you gonna fight Nia Jax? You gonna fight a woman? What you gonna do? Nah, all he got all he can do is watch because he know he wouldn't yeah. run back there to do it. Hey, you know yeah. what too? Low, low, who see that's touchy. That's touchy because then you're getting personal into it because you know kind of like the, the history between their family and Naomi. So yeah, things you know, make it ooh, they make it tied in. Because in reality, though, people don't talk about though, she wasn't exactly welcome. Nah. Into she that was family not, like that. So she wasn't. So it's like, yo, that could also, but but then too, that could also be the showing of it's like, yo. We like don't don't get it twisted. This is us now being able to go like, yo, she is accepted into this family, and then also too like, yo, like she is a part of this. She is under this cloth because I think that's the thing I'm kind of noticing is too like she's not under that same protection as them. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like she don't get them same like type of margin of errors like that. And it's really because I, I've noticed too like everybody else they've pulled in like that. Like even with Naya, like when she started going up against me, she's like, I'm not gonna fight my cousin. That's my cousin. Like it's yeah. been mentioned when it comes to all of them, but it's like she's never, they've never really pulled the trigger on the husband and wife thing in the mm-hmm. ring outside of like mixed tag matches and stuff like that. But you know, that's still kind of technically like the total divas thing. So it still falls under that. It's never been a yeah. main storyline where she has had to interact with the Usos, interact with Roman or anybody else involved in the Anoa family. That's very true. That, that's the. That, and that's very true because thinking to it, it's like because Naomi Trinity Fatu is his legal wife. Yeah. And like, and I, and for me in my head, I'm like, I'm hoping it's not a racial thing because the rocks half black. He is like the greatest member of the Anawai family that's alive right now. Like, the biggest, I, 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 the biggest. Man, yeah, and, really. yeah, the biggest. And so to me, like, you know, the way that the way the episode came off when it was when, when she met Rikishi. I don't mean to me. I, I don't want it. I don't think it was racial or anything like that, though. But it was something that was well, off with that. Well, then also, also too, though, you know, we gotta. We also think of like 
from the standpoint of like stereotypes and stuff like that too. So even like going back to the Rock's thing, like, you know, even though the Rock is half black, the Rock had a lot of issues when it came to like his father and then like, especially like how his father may have treated his, his mother and stuff like that. And so, you know, yeah. he was more along the lines with her family and her people yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's why it was kind of more of an acceptance too when it came to that, but too, that can also kind of lead that stigma as well as to like, you know, okay, you're bringing these people in who don't really know this, who don't really know these traditions. And it's just like, yo, what are you trying to do? But it's, but I think it's always been like that with women wrestlers and when it comes into those families because uh terry runnell uh you remember terry the diva terry oh, yeah. she oh, had course. she had that same exact issue with dusty Rhodes when she married dustin yeah uh, yeah yeah uh yeah. same same thing when uh deborah married uh stone cold you know it's so weird man too like they they, they were married man you don't even think about that they were married guys yes Ooh, they were freaking married, y'all. That is insane. So it's a, it's a lot of things going on, but I think it's a lot of stuff of like they were married. Wow. Yeah, you know that? No, no, no. I mean, I knew. Oh, like, wait, it's just like, it's just sitting in, sitting in. Like, like, like you think about it though, because like, like I, I remember her with Jeff Jarrett first and the puppies and all that though, and I never associated them two together until they brought it on air and everything like that. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh wow, they're really married for real. Yep. I'm like, like so okay. I'm like, okay, Stone Cold, I see you. I, I see you, Stone Cold. Right? I was like, Stone Cold? And Stone Cold married? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, man. But yeah, so but so we we'll, we'll, again we'll look to see exactly what's gonna happen with them as far as like I said I don't think really too much will come up to it as far as like like yeah, ramification wise. But as always, you know, <laughs> WWE we've given you a great way to write this in and whatnot. So you know, it's up to you. But before we get out of here, of course, we always like to have our fantasy booking. And as you can see, the theme yeah. of the kayfabe, it has been 25 years of the new world order. 25 years this week marks when the, when the life. world of wrestling for changed for forever. Life. For life. Hogan. For life. America's wrestling golden boy goes heel for the first time. The bad guy, Hollywood Hogan, Mm -hmm. was born 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. 25, bro. 25. In that moment, that lay drop, the whole crowd couldn't believe it. Because, again, this was the the Hulk, Hulk Hogan at that time, the ultimate baby face whole demeanor change like you said too and like that that what i felt was like that really helped his career a lot too because he was getting stale oh yeah he was definitely getting stale didn't know what to do another reason why i believe you know vince wasn't sure about continuing to do things with him in wwe and stuff like that you know not not to say like not work with him all but it was like yo that thunder's going away like we don't really know what to do and so it's just like yo or the WCW, it was a great change. And it was like, oh, snap. But again, same thing. It's the character. So the character is still. So it just don't work. Yeah. And, but just all of a sudden, man, bash at the beach. Yeah. And the rest is history, bro. Like, like bro. Unforgettable. Hogan, Hall, and Nash. They changed the business. As much as I may not like some of those members, you know, personally. Yes. You know, they still changed the business, you know what I'm saying? Uh, hug, you know what I'm saying? I have to, you know, hug Fogan. That's how I feel, you know, but, you know, this, you know, he still revolutionized the business, yeah, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and that was, and that, and that came taken away though, which like you said, which brings us to our fantasy booking segment. Yes, indeed, sir. Uh, fantasy booking, we wanted to keep this kind of simple, just as a celebration for them. I wanted to know your opinion, to do uh, on who in currently today, and I and I leave, and I leave this. It could be any. It could be any current wrestler today. It doesn't just have to be WWE. Uh, it could be. I leave. I leave it in your hands. Three okay. people, the NWO, came together once again. Three members. Who do you think would be those three founding members of today's New World Order? Now, for me, um, at first, I thought about who it would help in terms of like up and coming stars to really help, but. What I realized, too, that the way the NWO works is that it was great because it was built by three established stars. 
And what and the way to build those stars up is to bring up other stars to challenge this heel faction and build them up that way. Yeah. I feel that's the best way to do it. So that's why I was like, you know, what, let me flip this. The best way to do it is to get three top established stars, make them put them on a monstrous heel run, similar to the uh, to the to the, the two man power trip of Hunter and uh, Austin back in 01. Mm -hmm. Similar to that, you get Randy Orton, you get AJ Styles, and you get their leader, John Cena. You get, you get those three. Those three monster promo. They're literally like coming back, running rough shot, and that gives way to build up three more guys to do a Survivor Series. You find the best of the best of the best. The weeks leading up to Survivor Series is we're going to find the best of the best of the best to beat the NWO. One from Raw, one from SmackDown, one from NXT. A whole tournament a month because everybody wants their hands on the nwo in the end and that's how you can build up three new stars in the end Vision. all this three stars they go in there <laughs> even if they don't win in the end even if it comes down to one-on-one -on -one and they cheat but they put on a great show they get themselves over kind of like the way the the hardys and ed and christian did in the terry invitational back in think oh one even though ed and christian lost they still got over so win or lose you do it this way, you build up three new stars, and at that point, you know, it's a lighter schedule for all three of those men, he, uh, you know, AJ, Orton, and uh, Cena, because we don't expect them to ever wrestle on the same night at the same time. They probably will never only wrestle except for on pay-per-view. That way you only have them on there, name credibility, amazing promos, and give the other, other guys the rub. So that's hot pick. Okay. Dang, I like, how, I, like, I like how you based it off of it, what you based it off of, too, because it's just like, damn. <sighs> that, bro, that'd be a hard action, bro. Yeah. That, that was like the, those three, yeah. Oh, man, okay, okay. So, see, I, I, I too, went, went in that similar route, just like how you were saying it, just how you thought about it. Um, but for myself, what I did change was I was changing the ones that I, I, I'm thinking of them as the ones of who are about to be these next guys that's going to be like that, like the John Cena's, the Randy Orton's and stuff like that. The ones that still here putting in that time, putting in that work effort and stuff like that. So like my first one that I thought off top, Kevin Owens. Oh, yeah. Kevin Owens. Oh, so off, off top. One of the members in the NWO. And yeah. then the next person I was gonna go for I, I, um, was Drew, Drew McIntyre. Mm. Drew McIntyre in the NWO, That's not really, yeah, being disrespectful as hell. And then my last person, last person, Big E. Big E say, wow. Big E say, screw it. I'm done with it. It's new world order. I'm going back to when I first started. Y'all thought I was bad then. Wait till you see me in this ring. Now you got three powerhouses just wrecking yeah. shop. You got the Scottish psychopath. You got Big E and you got fight Owens fight. That's good. But now hold That's on. Hold on. One. But now That's hold on. One. I just I just need I need I need to bring back one more. One more. I just need to bring back one more. We need for that one. You need somebody. Eric Bischoff come back and say manager. No, wow. Because you need somebody to control that hot headed temper. You yeah, need somebody true. to control that. Because it's a lot of heads on that team. It's a lot of hot head on that team, bro. Eric Bischoff. That would be good. That would be good, bro. Because that. And then, too, and it's all guys that you can push. This. All those guys can be world champion right now. And all of them you know are here and willing to stay for this company. Yeah. Willing to keep going. All They show them, they show themselves and show up each and every single day. So either, and again, to run rough shop through everything. Like, yo, I would love to see Drew take back NXT. Love to see yeah. him go back because of the fact that he didn't get the run that he deserved because of the injury. Love to see him go take back NXT, build that back up so we don't have to worry about seeing the WWE champion uh, just, just so much yet. Kevin Owens, Universal Champion, Big E, WWE Champion. All three in the NWO? Oh, 
that would be good, man. Holding up them belts, just all the gold. That would be that's a good one, man. Because that way, that's that's true dominance over the whole company. We're not um, even worried about the secondary titles, the world titles only. Come get us. That's good. That's good. Yours is good. Now just imagine that taking on your NWO at Survivor oh, Series. That's gonna be good, bro. Come on. The icons versus the super the I icons versus icons. Money. Print the money. Print the money. And then we just being assholes. Stone Cold yeah. the special guest referee. Come on, throw me in there, man. Throw him in there. Cause, first of all, because why not? Okay. First of all, because why not? <laughs> and for the simple fact, I just want to see him stutter all six of them men at the end. Beer toast, man, because the bro, because Stone Cold is always ratings. I don't care. Always. Dude, always. When, you, when you hear the glass shot, you, you know how you know that? Bro, we were at WrestleMania in Tampa. And they played the promo for Dallas. And you know, the promo for WrestleMania, the glass shatters. Yeah. Bro, Pat, who is not like he's never really been to a show like that, Pat damn near passed out because he thought Stone Cold was about to come out. Bro, I believe it. That's the impact that man still pulls to this day. This dude yeah. really was like, and he was pissed at He's like, bro, I thought Stone Cold was really about to come. I was finna fucking lose yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. To this day, y'all, Stone Cold and Russell in 18 years. Okay? To this and, day. And we still be like, so when you coming back? Yeah. <laughs> so when you coming back? Like, I mean, Taker did it. Edge did it. Yeah. Edge had a broken neck and did it. So uh, when you coming back? How much? How much? How much? Vince, pay him. Pay him. Put some put some cybernetics in him so he don't hurt himself. Yeah. Give him another third. Man, the rope. He's <laughs> trying to <wreck> neck. <laughs> the rope. Sir, outstanding. <laughs> the bionic redneck. That is, mm -hmm. sir. Listen. But ladies and gentlemen, you seen what our fantasy booking was, so we want to know what yours is. So just to hear it clearly, what current superstars, if the NWO made its return, what three superstars do you think in today's wrestling world would fill those three slots? We want to know in the comments below. You've already heard ours. You already see how ours is going to go. So we want to thank each and every one of you for joining us on another episode of Kayfabe. Um, Kayfabe! <laughs> Kayfabe! Make sure you always check it out. It's going to be on my page right now, and it's going to be on Chinna Dudes as well. So make sure yes. you support both of them. Whether you see it on mine, you go and see it on his, it don't matter. Just go look at it. Click on these faces. Come talk with us. Come chat with us, man. It is always a good time for the wrestling podcast for us, by us. As always, I have been your host, Will Farrow. It's your boy, Chinna Dude. And we will catch you next time on Kayfabe. Kayfabe! Kayfabe! The goddamn Kayfabe! You're breaking the goddamn Kayfabe! Vince Russo, you little shit, you ain't nothing. Because you keep breaking the goddamn Kayfabe. Breaking it. Jim, cock it out.